The information and suggestions given in this podcast should not be considered as clinical or medical advice. Consult with a physician before implementing any information provided on this podcast. Radio. <laughs> okay, we're on. We're live. All right. Kind of. Not really. Live-ish. So I think it's important. We probably talk about uh, the basics of nutrition. We actually got a request um, today, this morning, actually, as we, we were posting on the yeah, Facebook, Facebook that form. that's true. Um, we can give her a little shout-out. Jackie was posting and said um, she wants to know more about the... Um, Basics of nutrition um, for those who are starting out or or starting back up, basically. So, um, you know, whether I mean, we're going to have some clients or some some listeners that are that are beginners and um, just getting going in this thing. I actually uh, I'll give another shout out to Corin. I think hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, Corin. Um, we were talking via email, and she was saying um, that. Uh, just talking about the dynamic we had talked about last episode about people um, in the gym, in the gym, and the yeah, line, and, and, and doing weight training and stuff. And so, um, I, she's just barely starting out though. Like literally, she has just started working with weights. And so, same thing is she's probably just starting out with nutrition. And we need to kind of cover at least some, yeah, like where people should start <coughs> and what they should focus on. Um, so, I mean, for me, what I usually start with people is. We, we literally just, um, I have them start with one idea or one goal or one nutritional change. Usually that first thing is actually water intake um, because water intake, uh, they're going to feel something immediately by oh, yeah. just rehydrating their body. Yeah, hydration is a big deal. If you, uh, if you get low hydration, you, you get dizziness and you, uh, you obviously are going to lose strength. Yeah. You got to have water. Well, and, the, and just the lethargy and... Um, fatigue oh, and, and things that people feel like I mean how many people have you talked to that they're like oh, I'm fatigued I'm tired I'm not productive at work I can't think straight I don't have good cognitive functioning well, well let's take a step before that though dude if you if you if you look at it from um, uh, a hunger standpoint most people that get hungry actually are thirsty they think, yeah they think they're hungry and they actually just want water yeah yeah and, and since the I hence know, why you're drinking water. yes now I'm drinking my water <laughs> I think it's the first time I've seen you drink water. Oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> At least right there while we're talking. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's, you're today. right though. It's it's common. Um, people feel like it's hot enough. My hat's coming off. <laughs> Shane's worried that it's too hot in this room. But... Not worried. It is too hot in this room. The, the the surface of the sun is a little bit cooler. I didn't know the surface of the sun was only seventy five degrees. It's a little bit cooler than this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So water is pretty important, yeah. especially uh, when the sun's out. So agree. <laughs> hey, yeah, there's a good transition to the sun. Mm-hmm. But uh, people definitely mistake thirst for hunger. Yeah, and often, and I mean that's one reason why people are eat a lot, eat, eating a lot. And you know, one of the hardest things for people really is the immediate, immediate accessibility of anything uh, that's food. I mean, that's true. Usually, at least in the United States. Yeah, usually all they got to do is walk what twenty feet, and there's a candy jar probably nearby. Yeah. <laughs> if not, so, you go around a corner, candy machine. Two buildings down is a gas station. Yeah, there's a Starbucks in the in the bottom of the the uh, building. corporate building, whatever. Right. So it's easy when someone feels like a physiological need for consumption of something to just be like, oh, I should go grab a treat. I should right. go grab a snack. And that's obviously a huge contributor to our, uh, our well, obesity boredom, epidemic. Yeah, boredom eating is, is, a, is a massive problem. I, start I'm a victim it. of that, seriously. Like, yeah. I'll, we'll be, it's either habitual or boredom. And I'll be like, oh, well, I, you know, I'm hanging out with uh, my girlfriend or I'm hanging out with a friend and let's go get some food. Right. I'm not hungry. I just, it's something to do. 
Yep. Um, That's the normal party. I mean, happy birthday. We're going to have a cake. Yeah. Hey, it's Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's it's um, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, have you seen uh, Jim Gaffigan's skit on, Food. I think it's Jim Gaffigan, oh, where he talks Gaffigan's about amazing. Americans, and it's like everything's oriented, or, our culture's all food. too oriented around food. Oh, yeah. He says, it's funny when you go to Disneyland, because it's just like, you're walking around with your family, or on vacation, and you're walking around with your family, and you're like, oh, let's go, you know, we, we need to get some we need to get some breakfast before we go out on the town, or whatever, and then we get breakfast, and then we go out on the town, and we're like, you know, uh, I'm kind of feeling like I need a snack right now, and then two <laughs> yeah. hours later, you're like, I really need a coffee, yes. and then where are we going to eat for dinner? And, and it's literally just this 24-hour cycle of, of uh, choosing what we're going to eat. I'm going to have to give a shout-out now for his book, Love Affair with Food. Oh, he has a book? I oh didn't know that. Oh my gosh. For the love of food. I'm going to have to look at the name of it now. <laughs> look it up. Yeah, it's... Well, i got to be right, because it's an amazingly good book. He has two books. Yeah? Yeah. That's Dad cool. Is, Dad is fat. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> right? Come on, so, don't be laughing in the background, what's boy? So, uh... Open up. Okay, so water... Yeah. Water so is often... Or, I'm sorry, thirst is often something Change that people the topic are... Before I even get to the name of the book... Come on. Man, I know you're trying to pull some back. content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get content. We're, being, on, we're on a really bad tangent right now. <laughs> we are on a side tangent, but I can't even find it yet, so it's going to be longer. Well, you can chime yeah, back in when you find it. I will too. So, um, where I start with clients is usually with water. We talk about okay, where's your water intake? Um, and I'm I'm appalled at how little water people drink and how many. Uh, uh, Dehydrating beverages people drink, namely your sodas uh, and your coffees. Yeah, uh, yeah you finish, your, finish your statement. I can't kill it in the middle of a statement. Yeah, That's please cold. don't. So, <laughs> I mean, I've had I've had people literally tell me they drink one water bottle a day and that's like a lot for them that's 16 oh, 12 or 16 fluid ounces a water. well it, yeah right no right it depends on which ones you get you can get liters and but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you're right they 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 we need to drink more of those anyway i drink too much water almost but yeah so all right the first i gotta say this dude okay you're gonna go, go ahead. into another statement go then ahead I, so jim you're the man his first book is dad is fat as i said his second book is food a love story <laughs> an amazingly great guy he has an amazing, amazing taste in his humor. All right. Anyway, sorry. Continue okay. on. I will go. Nice I will. Little shout out. I will step off and <laughs> and Jim. Well done. So um, I usually start with water. <laughs> Just like it's one of the simplest things you can do. And I mean, you know. So to further answer Jackie, uh, pretty much. I mean, start with what's easiest. Some people think that they need to start with what they know needs to be. What, where they need the biggest major change and say, you know what, just start with what's easy because you just can immediately uh, start making some positive change. One of the easiest things to do is That's literally true. just start drinking more water. Yeah, I would, I would argue going the easy path, but I, in my opinion, start someplace and take little steps. I don't know if the easy is the right word, but, but uh, yeah, it, Taylor's point's made. Um, so, so in my eyes, you know... Start with movement, and then definitely, and then throw in things like like water. Um, get your water patterns better, um, and you know how much time, how much you drink. You you need to drink quite a bit of water, but again, there is excessive because uh, that actually. Granted, nobody listening to this is likely to do this, but you can't kill yourself drinking too much water. It's just yeah. tough. Going and I'm not talking to, drowning. Um, hyponatremia. So right. yep. one important aspect of, of hydration is keep – people think that hydration is just in taking water. No, you have a lot of things going on that incorporate um, blood sugar and Truth. electrolytes, yep. which are sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium. Those are some of your foundational electrolytes. And th- hydration is – I mean, you know, two thirds ish of your body is made up of water, and it's about keeping the right balance within and outside of cells uh, in your body. Well, when you deplete yourself on on certain things, nutritionally speaking, it actually causes you to get it. Like, if you're, it, let's say, you had a lot of muscle mass, so you're not at the early stages, but you've been in it for a while. If you lose a lot of water, your hydration will actually make your muscle mass de- decrease because water is contained. Inside of muscle, so yeah. it's uh, well, considered lean mass. Absolutely, part of your lean mass yep. reading. So, so yeah, there, there's a lot to it. Water is a, is a key component to health. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, when people uh, 
underhydrate, you're throwing off or overhydrate. Yep. Like we talked about. Both. You're throwing off the balance of that in combination with the uh, the electrolyte balance in your body. That's how you can either dehydrate yourself, underhydrate yourself, or um, uh, overhydrate yourself. Which overhydration is a condition called hyponatremia, and that's just literally where you're drowning your body. And um, that's actually a problem a problem among uh, very fitness minded people. That, you know, you, you've seen the person in the gym carrying the gallon around. Now, do I drink about a gallon of water a day? Yeah, sometimes I drink a little bit more. But people who are drinking excessive multiple amounts of, of gallons of water a day need to be careful because it, of their electrolyte balance. They could well, that's very true well too, be doing right. more damage than Yeah, good. no, excessive amounts of water will actually clean your electrolytes out. And that's when you start to have it flowing through your system that heavily is when you have that problem. So mm-hmm. you, you do you need to keep a balance on it. That's when... Uh, with me, you know, I, I look at it from a heat perspective because what I do puts me in, in, a, uh, in a hotter environment a lot more often. Mm-hmm. So you've got to have more liquids, you know, when you're hotter than you do when you're, when you're cooler to, to uh, regulate your body as far as uh, just body temperature. Yeah. So, and, and that'll, that'll increase your, your necessity for water. It really, activity, I think, is a driving force on how much water you need. Absolutely. Um, and you know, if, if you're wondering, okay, I drink X amount of cups or water bottles per day kind of right now, and you're wondering a gauge for how much to drink, if you just kind of follow this basic, uh, equation, take your weight. So if I'm 175 pounds and I times that by 0.5 or I divide it by two, right? I need to drink at least approximately, uh, 90 fluid ounces of water per day. Now, my, like Shane's saying, my activity right. is a lot higher. Uh, I need more water um, for digestion because of the food I intake and um, recovery and uh, because I sweat and all those things. So I definitely need to increase more. That I say 0.5 uh, fluid ounces for every pound that you weigh or take your weight divided by two and that's how many fluid ounces you drink. That's your bare minimum I was going to say that's opinion. a scale. Yeah. That, that's to give you a scale point to go off of. If you're not, if you're not uh, hitting that scale zone, you're actually not doing yourself justice. Exactly. And then I would say, you know, for a approximate high is uh, – for a high cap would be um, taking the same number, your body weight – times that by 0.8, that gives you um, kind of the top range of your fluid ounces of water, which for me, if I do that at 175 pounds, um, that's 100 and, 140 fluid ounces, so just over a gallon, um, which is 128. So that can give you an idea what how much you need to hydrate for approximately for where you're at. Um, if you're not at that 0.5 uh, fluid ounces for every pound that you weigh right now, you need to get there or a little bit above that because that's going to be a, a big limiting factor oh, with, for you. Without question. I, and, and, you know, I was going to be, a, I was going to joke about it, but I'll, I'll contain that a little bit. Um, <laughs> cause scientifically speaking, that's probably the best gauge to go off of, but an easier, an easier technique is, Oh yeah. As long as you're actually drinking water, because if you drink water, if you don't drink water, you actually won't be thirsty. Um, that's when you start to have the hunger reactions. You'll uh, you'll have a kind of weird, funky reaction based off of that. But uh, if you get really low on water, you really, as weird as this is, you don't necessarily have a thirst reaction to that. So if you are drinking, though, it'll make it so that you want to have more water to the right levels. Once you get to the right levels, if you are thirsty, drink. If you're not thirsty, you're okay, if that makes sense. But as long as you're kind of following the, the uh, more scientific look, that'll that'll help quite a bit on that so yeah um another another way to gauge it too if you don't really like want to count fluid ounces throughout the day it's pretty simple is um a friend of mine who's a physical therapist actually recommended this um and he he tells uh he works a lot with athletes uh he's a physical therapist so he deals a lot with injuries and uh high school athletes specifically because he helps uh coach a, a, a local uh, football team um, I'm not sure if he still does it, but he would he would recommend those athletes um, basically just focus on every time they go to the restroom, they replace approximately a, as much fluid as they think they lost uh, in water. Well, yeah, right. Absolutely. And then eventually they catch back up. So uh, you, well, know, you can also... That's when you have to, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a big believer, you know, I'm going to, again, jump off topic, but it's the same concept because we're... It's fluid based, so I'm not a big believer in things like Powerade mm-hmm. or Gatorade or things like that because they have a really high sugar um, content, which in my opinion is, is extremely unhealthy. But um, that's why you have to have some kind of electrolyte in. 
uh, when you're when you're when you're performing that at a high peak level, you know, outside in a in a, in a football type scenario. Um, well, it's it's just when you need simple carbohydrates for performance. That's when a sports drink. That's what they're designed for. That is but what they're designed for. Is it Absolutely. still a manufactured, poor quality carbohydrate? That, yeah. That's that's the problem. Yeah. Right. It's 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 uh, it's what you're putting in is so so. It has pluses and negatives, you know, like yeah. everything in the world does. But. I mean, a better alternative would be to, uh, like, if you're going to, if you're going to need those simple carbohydrates for higher intensity activity, uh, uh, excessive weight, like heavy heavy weight training for like muscle development, those kind of things, keeping your blood glucose uh, up, sugar can be. Uh, an assisting thing. Assisting, I would agree. With. Yeah, absolutely. That's be- that's a better word. I, I think I would say I tell people to go right. with um, like coconut water, right? Like coconut a natural, water, sure. like a natural sugar. Yep. That's not refined or processed. That has natural electrolytes in it. Um, that's a better alternative to a sports drink. But I still like. There's some clients that um, that I have that'll. Uh, use uh, a, a Powerade or something like that. Yeah, and um, I'm not cacking appropriate. it. Appropriate. Absolutely. I, the only reason why I bring it up is because if you're drinking a large amounts of water, like Taylor was saying earlier, it, it uh, what happens is when you're flushing it through your system, you'll you'll kick out. You actually see on on certain people it shows a lot. You'll start seeing that like um, salt line, that that white line oh, that appears yeah. in the clothes, and that's that's their electrolytes and salts coming out of their pores, and so. What will happen is that will push through because it happens on everybody, just certain people. You can see it more on them. Um, and uh, if they're not replacing those electrolytes, water's not doing them a lot of good. Uh, it's better than no water, but it's the problem is, is that's when you start having massive problems. That was, I mean, that was Gatorade's huge marketing push, selling push. point was yep, absolutely. that you can't just rehydrate with water because you're missing the electrolytes. And that's why everyone was like, oh, my gosh, I need Gatorade yeah. because – it replaced some of those electrolytes. Right, um, right. And coconut water is a really good uh, yeah. uh, option. Super high in potassium, has yep. a little bit of sodium. Uh, I'm not sure the calcium, magnesium content. It, it on has. That, they have. They have an amazing. You don't need as much of those. No, coconut overall has it is an extreme, and we'll cover again. We're gonna. I hate to say this a thousand times over, but, <laughs> but we're gonna cover this later in more detail because we don't want to do this in, a, in an overview type mm-hmm. thing like this. But coconut overall has amazing health benefits. Yeah. We'll it's, actually it's get. Phenomenal. We should talk later about um, bulletproof coffee and uh, yeah. Coconut, even, even though I don't drink co- coffees, but you're right. But uh, I've, absolutely, I've recently been experimenting absolutely. with the coconut oil. Absolutely, um, on many well, in many had, ways. It, again, it has a side note for two blinks because I'm not going to let this one go down this road. But uh, it, the ketones that are within coconut uh, oils and stuff are amazing for for different things. But like I said, we'll probably have to take a almost an episode to talk about coconut itself it's yeah it has a lot of amazing health benefits you know i don't want to call it a superfood because i don't think there is any true superfoods no, but it has foods with nutrients I, right. I don't like the term superfood either i, I don't think either, it's a marketing gimmick it is it is but that being said in the world that we live in it's a superfood so yeah okay so um the next thing that i typically take clients through is um getting them converted to whole food Yes, I, I don't even sure. focus on calories or macronutrients uh, usually. Um, I get, uh, sometimes I give people a general window to work with uh, based off of body type or based off some other things. But um, usually if it's a complete beginner and they're just starting out, once we hit their water intake getting a little bit higher, we just say, okay, uh, what's, what's the easiest healthy food that you like to enjoy? And I have a grocery list I work with of proteins, carbs, fat options, veg- vegetables. And I just say, let's circle a few of these and let's – just just start eating those. Just start buying those. And just start getting off processed foods or packaged foods or too much canned stuff. Uh, and just start eating actual real food and start making that adjustment. And then they can feel good about it because they don't have to count calories. They don't have to count macronutrients. They just have to eat uh, a more whole food item. Yeah. And they can start with making choices that way. I really want to step in for two blinks. Go. And and so so when I talk when I when we talk about whole foods, when he's talking about whole field foods, I, I, I don't want to I mean processed foods are a different category without question. But in my eyes and, and I'm not I'm not gonna even say anything negative about what he said because he's completely hundred percent right. The thing I want to add to that is is the biggest thing for whole foods is is, is not using supplements directly. So mm-hmm. yeah. people people have a tendency, especially when they start going towards um, health and fitness type stuff, especially when they're new. 
Uh, it, it gets bigger as they go, depending on their goals, but they think they need to supplement in, put in proteins, put in all these different things like creatines, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I can throw out a ton of different things that they, they think they need to buy when if they're eating whole foods, even if you use processed foods, even if you use canned foods, um, the problem with them is they add different things to them. So when you start talking about canned foods and you start talking about uh, uh, different processing for foods, they have to add salts, they have to add sugars to keep it so that they, uh, they meet a certain standard. Salt is one thing that preserves foods. So the sodium content goes up substantially when you're talking processed foods. But even, even, even saying all that, you don't need to jump into supplementation. I would lean towards initially just eating normal foods and not worrying about yeah. supplementa- supplementation. Absolutely. Tr- try to go down uh, uh, and, and eat um, eat more correctly, working in stages into what Taylor's talking about because I think that's the ultimate goal in 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 the way you eat. Yeah. You know that, uh, but but whole foods is definitely the way to go. Ultimately, you have to eat whole foods to 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 have a healthy life overall. So. I think I think you're right. People turn <coughs> too quickly when they're like, yes, "Okay, absolutely too quickly." All right, it's New Year's. I'm gonna I'm gonna set a new goal. I'm gonna start working out, and I you know I got to eat better. And then like the first thing that they go to is they're like, "Okay, what supplement do I got to buy? Yep. What fat burner do that I is need? The first question. What protein powder yep. do I need to be on? What uh, what uh, uh, appetite suppressant do I need to start taking?" Mm-hmm. And it's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, like some of those things might have a place." Later down the road, right. some of them, right. mo- lot, mo- the majority most supplements of them don't. don't. Right, but depending on why are you why are you turning to a, a capsule? Why are you turning <coughs> to a, a a secret pill when you already know it's diet and exercise? You already know you need to work on your nutrition. Well, and, and start and, eating cleaner. And again, being in the United States, it's a uh, it's kind of a natural reaction in this in this society that we have here that we want instant fixes. Absolutely. So they, that's why they're. That's one of the reasons why they're looking for a pill because a pill will make it so they don't have to work to get there. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's 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 interesting to me though the cycles that people will go through mm-hmm. year after year, month after month, or whatever. Diet um, roller coasters. Yeah, where where they've done it ten times before yep. and they still are making that decision. It's it's the psychology around that is really interesting to me. Yep. Um, uh, but so I mean, definitely, you people want to start eating. Um, just cleaner, more natural sources of foods. Now, it doesn't. Nec- a lot of people are worried about eating clean because they're like, "Oh, if I eat healthy, it's so expensive." Can it get that way? Absolutely. Quick. Um, however, you don't have to be eating organic, non-GMO, which we'll keep that for another episode. But you don't have to be eating organic, non-GMO, um, really expensive name brand uh, health foods uh, in order to see results. You can start with just your basic produce. You can start with. Um, your normal kind of farm raised meats um, and things oh, like yeah. that. Just start eating well. Well, I mean, and, and let's cover it a little bit. So, so when you when you when you start really looking at at things, like I said, if you want to go ultimate ultimate goals, um, you do want to go pretty organic. You do want to go with, yeah, ultimately with right. You want to go with um, grass fed uh, uh, beefs. You know, if you if you can get that kind of food, it's better because the yeah. stuff that they don't add to it. Is 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 it's so beneficial not to have it in there? Yeah, you know, uh, GMO um, being that it's 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 genetically modified is. Uh, I don't think that's the only negative thing too. I mean, let's let's be real. If you if you look at, uh, we'll hit on grains for two seconds, and, I, and and don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm not going to beat up the grain organization in the world, but um, because of the nature of what we're trying to do. Uh, agriculturally, we want to get as much production mm-hmm. in the shortest amount of time yeah. to be able to get it out to people to be able to do it. So they're trying to do things that are good overall, and they're trying to make it financially beneficial for well, themselves. Well, yeah, they're trying to make money. I mean, Absolutely. So it, 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 the more efficiently you can turn over product and, right. and, and sustain it, right. uh, so, you, but, you make more money. But see, I think, I think it, it, the same scenario is happening when they cross, cross-breed it, if you will, cross-pollinate. Um, and and they get a, a variant that GMO does the same thing. All GMO does is speed up the process. And I think you have the same problem. problem well, it with depends adults. on what you're talking about. Well, of there's course, so many different kinds of, of GMOs that do different things. Well, but, right, right. But ultimately, but that's what they're saying. that's what their intention is to, is to push it into a specific thing faster. You know, otherwise they would take the long term warping it sense 
with with nature. But see, I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, that that does the same kinds of things. It, that's one of the reasons why I think there's such a problem with uh, um, gluten. Mm -hmm. Is I think gluten is is not from GMO. I think it's from from cross breeding um, wheat, and and it's raised the gluten levels to a point where it's a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think that's where you get a lot of effect. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different types of gluten. Granted, too, that's, that. and I, I gotta say before that, in fairness, I'm not doing this from an absolute scientific perspective. I'm doing this from observational stuff that I personally seen in my studies, because um, I don't want to make it sound like I'm, I'm quoting a study on that because I'm not. But, mm -hmm. but that's that's a, that's a feeling that I have, and from what I've seen, that's that's the evidences that I've seen. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so once once I kind of uh, get people eating just better, just drinking more water, they're increasing their vegetable intake, they are uh, getting some more lean protein sources. That's, that's usually the next thing I look towards is where is their protein intake at? Because this is a common question that yep. people ask is, should I be eating high protein? I've heard a lot of high protein is bad for you though. Um, or I, like I'll sit a big thing down. Say is like to be honest, damage. I sat down with a, a potential client this morning um, and, uh, she was talking to me and she's like, you know, and I know I should be eating high protein and she continued talking and I was like in my head, I mean, I didn't say anything yet, but in my head, you know, high protein not, isn't necessarily the best thing for her depending on what she's saying is high protein. Now is high protein for That's her 50, 50 grams or yeah. is she saying it's 150 grams, you know? Um, but I usually start educating people on what their protein needs are. That's um, the key next after we get them eating cleaner drinking good water because they're i mean they need the, the the protein to increase their lean muscle mass which is going to increase their metabolism and, and help them recover decrease well, soreness a muscle little bit. is protein that's what i'm saying in, but in but theory you know if you if you're breaking down muscle you're starting to work out and you're eating whole foods but you're not eating a lot of protein sources and you're breaking down muscle over and over again your amino acid pool in your bloodstream and your liver and your muscles is going to decrease you're so you're going to increase soreness you're not going to recover as fast you're not going to increase your metabolism or your muscle as as quickly so it's really important to make sure you're eating adequate amount of protein and the most um Commonly cited study, uh, I would say, in the academic world when you're being educated in nutrition is, is eating approximately 0.7 grams of protein per pound that you weigh. So if we're going based off that, um, and let's you know say I'm 175, we times 175 by 0.7, I should be at, uh, about getting 125-ish grams of protein per day if I'm a fitness-oriented person and I'm and I'm, uh, you know, lifting weights and I'm trying to build muscle. I would, I mean, there's people that will argue that you need more protein than that. And we will talk about that. Um, but let's, that's kind of the most let's, common let's, let's recommendation stay, let's for stay, protein. Let's stay on that, actually. Yeah. I think that's something we should talk about. On this. Yeah. Be so, because, but, because, well, they'll talk about, I mean, in my opinion, two's, two's, Two is ludicrous. Two, two grams is ludicrous. Two grams per pound. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that's the biggest overkill ever. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, what happens is, um, and, and granted, this is a little deeper, and we probably should cover it in a different, we probably will cover it later, but I want to cover it now because I think it's important, is uh, when you start talking that level, it does, it goes into your fat cells. It really does. And people mm -hmm. talk about the fact that protein doesn't convert directly over to fat, which in theory... Uh, it, I mean, it's less inclined to, but it still will. Say. Well, gluten... Well, when you start talking about, without throwing the actual terms out, because I almost did, I guess it doesn't matter if I do, but um, uh, proteins will convert to uh, uh, a glucose form uh -huh. um, uh, if, there's no, if there's no carbohydrates in your body. Okay, and so if you have a massive amount of proteins, what will end up happening is instead of doing what it's supposed to do or, or it's made, which you're taking it in for it to do, um, it will it'll convert to, to an energy source. Yeah. You know, and it'll run your body. And, and when, it, when that starts to happen, automatically it's going to go into fat cells. It's going to do all these other things. Yeah. If you're in excess of what your protein requirements are, it's going to do something else. It's, you know what I mean? It's either going Well, the body to... converts it. Yeah. And, and okay, so let's, uh, let's, let's talk on, on reasons why um, people have said that it's really hard on your body because that's part of this. You know, they'll say that, that uh, protein is, high consumption of proteins is hard on the body. Well, I'm going to tell you it's technically not. The conversion process 
is what's hard on the body. You're talking about what elevated nitrogen levels. Absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. So basically, when when protein is broken down, yes, uh, and converted in the yep. body, yep, um, it, it 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 contains nitrogen um, in the protein structure yep. and. It, the elevation of nitrogen levels in your body can eventually become toxic and it'll put strain on your filtration system like your liver and kidneys. Um, but that's, that's a heavy do- dose of protein. Mm-hmm. So, so when, when, when people are talking about that it's hard on your, let's, let's give an exact example to talk how hard it is on the kidneys. Is it hard on the kidneys? It absolutely is if you're having extreme amounts of excessive. Mm-hmm. But excessive is just that. It's excessive. There's no reason for it. It doesn't help. Yeah, you know, and, and 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 again, you know, yeah. Some people will take in excess protein on purpose. They know they're taking excess just because they want to be teeming with protein. Yes, um, so they don't miss overflowing, so they don't miss any little muscle gain that they could potentially have, and they're willing to. They, they think that it's um, sacrificing um, that elevated nitrogen balance and creatinine levels in their body, right. um, is worth this potential muscle gain. But when you're in excess, you're in excess, just yep. like you're saying. And all those and it's, it out. Exactly. It's, you're just point. wasting it. Yep. So, so what ends up happening is, is you have the exact opposite effect. You have, I mean, you'll get the muscle growth. It's not, you'll lose that, but you'll, uh, you'll gain a lot of fat along top of it. And that's, mm-hmm. that's why I think we should continue to talk about it for a short time on this, yeah. um, without missing it. Cause because I think that's a key to this. It's not. It's not that I think people should be afraid of it. But see, now let's step back and, and talk about this in Whole Foods. It's hard to overdo it on proteins with with Whole Foods. It's hard to. You have yeah. to eat an astronomical well, amount. Well, I of mean, proteins. when you're talking about Whole Foods, um, your your main protein sources are are animal products. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're if you're vegan and you're trying to get your protein, you're not gonna you're not gonna hit excess. Um, Almost when you're impossible vegan. to. It's, yeah, it's it's hard to get even 25-30% of your diet as protein uh, when you're vegan from just plant-based sources. But if you're eating animal products, then yeah, it's a lot easier to get a high protein or go into excess. But you still, Excess is still tough, man. Yeah. If, if you're For trying, the average person. Well, yeah, let's let's yeah. talk about it on, 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 a, on a non-vegan. When we're talking, uh, you know, someone who eats meats um, and they eat beef. That's a lot of steaks. Uh, trying to eat that and, and get a high dose of protein is tough to do. Mm-hmm. You know, eat a lot of chicken, eat a lot of beef. You're eating a ton, and, yeah. and you just you'll fill up. Yeah. You know, actual eating those kinds of sources of whole foods. Honestly, it, you'll never do it physically. Uh, you would have to be uh, beyond a glut. I think the only people that would be apt to do it are those uh, fitness addicts or enthusiasts. Probably, but like it's a ourselves. mental push. Yeah, yeah, it's the, you're right. They have, you have to consciously to, absolutely only way you can imagine in to actually hit those numbers. And I still think they couldn't get to the point where it'd be scary. That's another reason why supplementation is well, potentially yeah. scary. I was just going to say that as I was going to say. Now here's where protein powder comes in. Right, it's really oh, absolutely. easy for someone to be like, oh, you know, I got I got to rush to work, so I'm just going to have a gram, uh, scoop of protein, 25 grams, and then they're at work and they're. Uh, they, um, they're like, well, I'm trying to eat healthy, so I'm going to have a chicken breast, uh, grilled chicken breast salad, and, uh, oh, I have that protein supplement too, and they have another 25 grams, and their chicken breast is, you know, 35-ish grams or 40 grams or something like that, depending on how big it is. Um, it's easy with protein powders oh, to go it's, way it's, overboard. It's phenomenal I remember easy with protein when powders. I first started out as a trainer, um, oh, I leaned heavily into supplementation. I probably spent $200 a month um, on supplements on average for my first year. And, um, getting it, I guess not saying as a trainer necessarily, but getting into fitness and, and into my first year training until I realized the importance of diet and the less, lesser importance of supplementation. Right. Um, and, uh, I noticed it's, it was so easy for me to overconsume on protein and I did it purposefully. Like, you oh, said, yeah, absolutely. I was trying, I was reading the forums and the, the bro science that's out there about, Eating two grams per pound, I was doing that. That was yeah, I was consuming three hundred grams of protein a day. Yeah, but let's take this into <laughs> consideration. So, 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 but, but, uh, it's not just the bro science. It is, it is technically bro science uh, when you want to get real about it. But it's the industry. So, yeah, so, yeah. And this is the reason why. I, another reason why I want to say this, and this is where I didn't want to avoid um, uh, hitting on this topic. But let's take me as examples today. Mm-hmm. Um, just because of my time schedule. To do this show, did you have protein powder? I had two. Yeah. So, so if you look at it, because I haven't had any real food today. I mean, I, I really haven't. I had, I had um, about two cups of cottage cheese. Okay. 
uh, and then the rest, is which more, is a high pro, high which protein is a high source. protein source. Yeah. Technically, that's well, not a hugely high, but it is. It's a oh, higher. It can. It can be. It, it's, it's higher. Like Twenty-ish grams oh, per it's, cup. Well, yeah, it's in that zone. Agreed. That's true. But um, let's let's just look where I'm at. I mean, and this is just today. So Shane's looking up is uh, my fitness pal. Which, if you ha- if you haven't um, used My Fitness Pal before, it is a nutrition logging uh, application um, for your for your phone mobile app. Um, it's that among a couple others, really awesome app. Oh yeah, absolutely. for connecting with other fitness minded yep. individuals and keeping track and, of what and you're learning doing. nutrition. I that's think true. That, actually, you know it what? helps. It helps with nutrition. That's sure. a that's a perfect little tangent to run off before he he lists his foods. Is if you are just starting out in fitness or you're getting back into it, maybe you've done it before. Get a My Fitness Pal. Just oh, yeah. go download it. Yeah. Um, it's free. Yep. You can create yep. a free account. You can meet with fitness minded people. Mm-hmm. We're on there. Um, Shane uses it a lot more than I do. Mine oh, I yeah, use I'm, it as I'm a here and there tool. I'm Shane's logged in for like thousands of days in a row. Oh, it's not thousands. I'm only over 500. <laughs> but um, it, what it does is it gives you a breakdown of it the does. actual nutritional Nutrition. content of all the foods you're eating. Your daily totals in well, terms of on a free level, approximate calories. Uh, uh, approximate calories, true. Proteins, but, carbs, and fat right. balances. Right. I was going to say macronutrients more than yeah. micro. Yeah. But uh, you can go well, into it in more depth with with the premium stuff. So it'll go through macronutrients, which is your proteins, carbs, and fats, and that's more uh, looking at just what's the energy calorically content of it. Um, and then you have a nutrient breakdown. It uh, does have a nutrient breakdown, that's and true. that's that's more important to look at. That is to I agree look with that. at. Are you over consuming on things like sugar or uh, trans fats? Um, oh man, and stay away from trans fats. Yeah, or um, you know, are you getting too much sodium? Sodium is definitely essential, but most of the foods we have, uh, especially processed foods, are well, we super add, high yeah, in salt. They, like I said, they add that to keep the processing. That, yeah, that's what and preserves it's a preservative. So, so my fitness pal, if you start just putting your foods in there. It'll give you a huge uh, eye-opening perspective on what your diet really is like. Yeah, and on that note, let's check out. Look Shane's. at how much my protein. Okay, so is. I'm I'm auditing Shane's uh, my fitness pal right pro- now. Look at my proteins for today. Okay, so Shane, uh, Shane's eaten. following his recommendation um, for what do you weigh right now? I weigh uh, two hundred five. So he weighs two hundred five. So he's following the recommendation approximately for about 0.7 grams of protein at the second. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's about it. Because I'm his goal... because I'm supplementing because of time. Yeah, his goal for the day says 174. Um, we're, we're at lunchtime right now. It's 1230. <laughs> he's at 144 grams. He literally only has 30 grams left until he's meet, met his daily cap. Now, um, his uh, his healthy fats, he's at about 57 I'm grams. I'm really low on my healthy fats. Yeah, he... To where I want to be anyway. Yeah, and then his uh, his carbohydrates are at about 123 grams. Which is high grams, for what which, I want. Yeah, I was just going to say, his fats, for what he's doing for, for right now, his goals, his activity level, he should be flipping that. His fats need to be a lot higher. His carbohydrates yeah, they, need to be lower. I mean, lower. They will, by the end of the day, they will be higher, but... But what's great about that app is it's so detailed, yet it's very simple to understand. It helps the the, the beginner learn the basics and fundamentals of nutrition, and... Um, Helps kind of see where you need work. It even gives you recommendations uh, for where you need to be based off of uh, the uh, the DRIs, um, which are the uh, daily rec- uh, uh, dietary re- um, recommended intakes, yep. um, reference intakes, sure. and uh, so those are kind of your your standards for what uh, level of nutrients you should be getting. Now you're going to notice something if you're eating a lot of packaged, canned, processed foods. Oh, you're going to get a lot of salt. You're going to get tons of salt, yep. tons of sugar, sure. yep. high fats. Yep. Usually, and high fats not bad if you're eating the right kind of fats, but it's usually high in trans fat. And, well, not um, necessarily trans fats, but they. So, so, but the thing is, 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 is again, you want to have better control over it. when you're. That's why when when Taylor was talking about um, what your goals are when you're eating. You want to go towards a vegetable base, you know, throw some fruits in there a little bit, uh, but you want to stay on the outskirts of the of the of the grocery store more or less. Perimeter shopping. Perimeter shop, shopping. Yep, and and because the stuff inside is the stuff that has um, sugars to to change the taste value. Yeah. Okay, so that it draws people in. They go for what they call the sweet spot. You know, I can give you book recommendations on that. Oh, but the, this what you're about to talk about is really important, though. The you're talking about how companies have used that. that companies do studies on their products oh with gosh. different levels of sugar in them or artificial sweeteners, and they test uh, specific groups of people to find out which um, level of sugar yeah. or artificial sweetener is the most ideal and the most appealing, and that's the amount that they put in the food yes. so that it gets you addicted to it. And, and sugar it actually, has addictive qualities. It absolutely does. Absolutely. And so, so 
Um, the one that I'm, I'm not going to use specific names on this, but uh, we'll just say that uh, in the in the soda, uh, the drinks um, is where most of this was found. The sweet spot yeah. was found heavily in. I, I, I mean, I know exactly because I I've studied it and you can find it. And like I said, I could I'll give book recommendations later on this, but it's uh, um, it's an interesting science behind it. But there's a like they call it a sweet spot because if it's too sweet, people are turned they, off. They reject it. Right, and if it's not sweet enough. They reject it. So if they can hit that sweet spot and they can stay within that sweet spot, everybody seems to want it. And, 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 and they and, make more sales. And they make more and more and more sales and they sell more and more and more and more stuff. You know, back when I was a kid, um, the Big Gulp, which was a 7-Eleven's Big Gulp, um, was 32 ounces. Now, 32 ounces is a regular drink. You can buy like higher than 64 cans. Oh, yeah. My, my mug is 100. <laughs> Why do you have one? I use it for water. Right. right. I really do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I really do. All day long, I'll have my water. They, I, 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 I fill it up with ice and water, and, then, and that's what I have no, all day long. Cool. But no, I, I, so yeah, they have 100. 100 is, I wouldn't say it's the biggest, but it's the biggest you can buy easily. Oh, yeah. But but yeah, 32 was the, is, was the huge. And, and those are meant for sodas. I mean, yes. that's for sale yes. in your gas station. Absolutely. It's meant for soda. Yep, yep. And that's why the sweet spot was to suck you in so that people drink oh, yeah. more and more. But they do it in the foods, too. To give you some perspective, people, um, one can of your average non-diet soda or zero-calorie soda is going to have approximately 48 grams of sugar. Yeah, oh, per yeah. can, oh, which yeah. is 12 ounces. Oh, yeah. Now you're talking about someone going to a gas station and filling up a Big Gulp, whether it's 32, 64, or 100 fluid ounces... I, I don't even know the math on that. That's crazy. Let's do it actually on my calculator. But <laughs> that is a ridiculous amount of sugar. Um, and now, you know, some of you aren't necessarily consuming that high amount, but think about it. One can a day, 48 grams of sugar per day times 365, you're taking in 17,520 grams of pure sugar, processed sugar, not even natural. Um, well, geez. that you don't even need to be taking. Well, no, and if you want to go in into nastier stuff and. You know, we've uh, we're probably gonna have to split this into two yeah. podcasts. We were gonna do this all in one, and we're not even getting we'll to the have exercise to side of the it. food industry later. Well, we'll do that too, but I'm not even talking about that. I'm saying because we were talking the basics on this, we're gonna have to we'll, we'll split this and we'll do basics probably the next on uh, on exercise stuff because uh, we don't want to exclude that. But um, you start throwing a diet, which quote unquote has low sugar or no sugar, quote unquote. Um, the uh, the artificial stuff is just is worse almost than mm-hmm. than than consuming sugars. I mean, and, and we're start, talking about artificial sweeteners artificial being sweeteners. especially aspartame. Aspartame is the big one. Sucralose, um, yeah. Sucralose is still carcinogenic. It I is, think aspartame. Is. The studies against aspartame are 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 more solid. Well, they um, they like I said they the problem with them is they do they have a big manipulation on the DNA level. So your your body itself because of it becomes cancerous mm-hmm. is because your cells change. And there, I mean, it's still young into the artificial sweetener research. And I don't want to make it scary yeah. anyway because it's not like it's a scary level at this point anyway. Think of it this way. You drink way. one can of Mountain, uh, not Mountain, yeah, of, of uh, what, Diet Coke, you're not going to break out in cancer. Yeah, yeah. Or... Think of it this way. It's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to foods and potential potential risky ingredients and things like that. Right. Um, is one can going to kill you? No, probably no. not. No. But is uh, a can a day for your whole life? Uh, we don't know the outcomes of that, to be yep. honest. And that's yep. But that's what's scary. And if you're drinking loads of it, the odds are astronomical mm-hmm. that, yeah, you're going to have an effect sooner, mm-hmm. for sure. Because, mm-hmm. like I said, the studies are, are, are coming out all the time on, on the effects, and they definitely aren't good. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, um, I guess when it comes to be recommendations for nutrition for beginners or for people who are getting back into fitness that have been off the wagon for a few years or something like that, um, recap. yeah, I think the, the, the biggest thing that I focus on, my personal philosophy is I focus on a lifestyle change with people. Like oh, I, yeah, sure. you know, and my, some of my clients that have stuck with me for years are the ones that really see those transformational results because they actually change their lifestyle. This isn't a temporary program that they do. It's, they make consistent changes. Um, now they don't, they don't try to do like a crash diet or a all at once type transformation. And so what, what I focus on with them is really focusing on the individual, one individual thing at a time. Like, so if you're just starting out, I would just say, okay, like Shane said, increase your physical activity. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter what it is, but increase Number your one, physical I, I, activity. You know, that's the funniest thing is I would, 
I would say the first thing you do is water. Yeah, I, yeah. I think you're mm-hmm. right on that. So, so water would be make sure your water is correct. Next thing is I would start to move. Yep. I'm not even saying, and like I said, I think we should cover this in better detail. So I'm not going to touch it beyond that at this point. And then you should start eating whole foods. Mm-hmm. And and like I said, I would lean towards non-processed, um, um, even organic. It doesn't have to be because, like I said, the cost may be prohibitive. It, it really has a better nutritional value, and you can eat less for a better value. So technically, the value should be better. Mm-hmm. But I get it. You know, I have to buy food too. Yeah. So, um, but the less processed, the better um, it's going to be for you overall. So, so I think that's that's kind of a crucial key to that too. Yeah. So pretty much take it step by step. Just focus on one thing at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself. Um, with, with uh, like a crash program or something that's going to be completely transformational from from what you're already doing with your current habits because it's not sustainable. Well, you, you need. To, I mean, it can be for the person with the right mindset, but it's rare. No, no, and, absolutely. And I would just say, I, I just want to personally wrap up my my, my topic or my my uh, mm-hmm. point being that if you uh, focus on changing one major thing or even a even a simple change per week and do it consistently for seven days. Not saying that seven days is a magic number, but it just gives you some perspective. Change one thing per week and then keep that going consistently once you've established some consistency and move on to the next thing. In a year, you can make 52 positive, healthy changes in your diet, your exercise, your sleep patterns, your work, your activity level, whatever. You could totally be a different person physically and uh, and mentally um, in terms of how healthy you are just by following that one concept. If you can commit to that, make one simple change each week, you'll see, and, and keep it going, you'll see far better results than doing some type of crash program for six weeks or oh, ab- t- Absolutely. Weeks. And it, see, the only thing I want to add to that before we close is, is um, understand that for a healthy life, it's a change that's permanent. Yeah. Um, key. You're not so so. We'll, we'll 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 touch on this. I'll touch on this really fast. But diets, a diet is just how you eat, and so you can do different styles of dieting, and and change how you eat for short periods of time for effect. Um, what you're looking for though is the long term, and and if you're looking for long term for health, anybody that's in this should actually be in it for life. It's I mean this is what your life is about. If you don't have a good life a healthy life, then um, you're fighting your body all the time. So why not make yourself as healthy as you can? Go for a lifestyle change in what you eat. You know, Taylor, he he hit on that really quick, but I want that to be really run uh, kind of in your face because I, I, that's something I think is the most important key to this is it's a lifestyle change. It's not a dietary try. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a lifestyle change that you're going for. So... Yeah, that's that's all I really wanted to add, and I'll I'll step off and yeah, no, it's I agree. It's it's not a health phase of your life. If you if you come at it with that approach, like many people do, like oh, I'm going to be very disciplined for the next three months or whatever, and then you're going to earn laziness. You're never going to be satisfied, and you're not going to be healthy, and you're not really going to see that that it great won't last. Results. I think yeah. that's a better thing to say. It won't last. Yeah. So it, it's not lasting. That's all fleeting stuff. Yeah, why why try to have these quick fix temporary changes for a subtle immediate level of satisfaction when if you just make a couple simple changes consistently and you never stop ma- improving yourself, you could have so much more uh, satisfaction out of that process and you would live a, a quality life. Quality is the key. Yeah, Absolutely. like, I mean, I always, I always talk to my clients about what their motivation is. But when, I first int- when I first meet a person, even before we sign up for training, I ask them, I say, okay, we've got your goal. You want to lose X amount of pounds or you want to focus on this or that. Um, why? Yeah. Why did you walk in the yep. door today? What's That's the point? Question. And... and you really need to ask yourself that question. I want to do a whole episode on this, but finding what your real motivation is because until you find a motivating reason that makes you emotional, um, your pr- likelihood of you sticking with your goal for the rest of your life is unlikely. Right. So you need to find something that truly motivates you to say, I am going to live a healthy lifestyle. I'm going to make these positive changes. I might ebb and flow and fall off the wagon a little bit, but I am always going to be making progress. You need to find a reason that will be the driving force behind that action. Yep. So, yeah.
Sound good? Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna not talk. <laughs> It's a, it's our bathroom break, so just wanted to say <laughs> thanks for tuning in to Metabolic Radio. We sure do appreciate you. We're growing really fast. We're already pushing 200 downloads. It's barely been a week. Thank you so much for your support, Absolutely. guys. Absolutely. And um, Crap, yes. Yeah, if you haven't had a chance to get on our Facebook group, go on to Facebook and in the search bar, type in Metabolic Radio Private Forum. We're, uh, we're leaving that open for free right now. You can get... Uh, advice from us and the other uh, listeners at Meta- uh, our other metabolic radio listeners and it's just a support community for you especially if you are a beginner starting out um, it gives you a great platform to ask questions and we do answer questions uh, off of off that uh, platform and uh, so until next time we'll uh, we'll sign off we'll say peace Thank you for listening to Metabolic Radio. Check out our fitness guides at metabolicradio.com. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash metabolic radio. And follow us on Instagram at metabolic radio, at the metabolic seahorse, and at the metabolic panda.